You're watching a special broadcast of Reality Check where we'll take a deep dive into the big Modi reset, today's cabinet expansion and the paradox that lies at the heart of it. On the outset, as the Prime Minister added over 30 members to his cabinet, swelling the size of the Modi government now to close to 80, the signal appeared to be that this will be an attempt to course correct on the perception that there's been governance mismanagement, particularly during the pandemic. And to this end, some big names were dropped. In fact, those that were dropped made bigger headlines than those that were kept. The most startling of all, Ravi Shankar Prasad, Prakash Javdekar, key point men for the government, the face of the government, uh, whether it comes to both the upside and the downside, whether it's to wage wars against the government's critics and rivals, or to try to defend the government's track record. Harsh Fardhan, some would say this was kind of to be expected given how the pandemic was handled and politically more of a lightweight compared to these other two. But overall, close to a dozen ministers, almost a third of the existing cabinet dropped by the Prime Minister, again to indicate that he means business. As a result of which now, key portfolios have opened up, which the new cabinet mantris can try to jockey for. Health, IT, INB, environment, education, all these portfolios now up for grabs. And additional charge portfolios also that could be parceled off. Piyush Goel is holding both railways, commerce, as well as food and civil supplies. But the big question is that of all those who've been inducted today, is there enough talent, is there enough bench strength to actually take over these portfolios and turn them around? And this is what isn't clear. The government seems to be actually underlining the social chemistry of their new reshuffle even more or as much as the governance chemistry. And to this end, they actually put out a very detailed breakdown of the caste breakup of the cabinet, something which is highly unusual, pointing out how it's got at least 12 members of the scheduled caste, 8 members of the scheduled tribes, 27 OBCs, 5 minorities, indicating that this is as much an attempt to signal a governance reset as it is to signal a political reset, keeping in mind big elections coming up next year, especially Uttar Pradesh. So this is the paradox that the government has attempted to negotiate, but whether this will work or not is something that we will now get into on reality check. All right, joining me tonight on the panel, I have with me Sanjay Kumar, sephologist and professor at uh, CSDS Lok Niti. We have with us Geeta Bhatt, political analyst, supports the BJP. Ami Ben Yagnik, Rajya Sabha MP of the Congress, is with us. Satya Prakash Mishra of the JDU and Gansham Tiwari, spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party. Let me start with you. Sanjay Kumar, because you've been tracking closely the popular pulse and you've been pointing out how that there is every indication that there has been a dent to otherwise the Teflon coated popularity of the Prime Minister in the aftermath of the pandemic. And that's possibly why some of these drastic changes were made. But when you look at overall the composition of the cabinet, the names that have been brought in, the attempt to highlight the social engineering behind it, do you think that an exercise like this is going to work? Uh, I, I won't be able to say whether it's going to work or not. But yes, with this reshuffle, government is not only trying to send out a message of social engineering. Government is trying to send out a message, lots and lots of messages. One big message is, you know, this is one of the youngest cabinet. Second, we have inducted lots and lots of women uh, ministers. Seven new women ministers have been inducted. Hmm. I think government is also trying to make sure uh, to rebuild the image internationally and nationally. Uh, rebuild the image because we all know that uh, at the time of pandemic, the India Indian government was not getting a good press internationally uh, nor nationally. So if you, if you remove the health minister, I think there is an effort to make up for the bad image, bad press which uh, Indian government got internationally. Nationally, uh, the popularity of Prime Minister Modi was on the decline and that was only and only because uh, people were not happy or I, I would say people were angry the way uh, pandemic rolled out the second in during the second wave of pandemic, how government was ill prepared.
So government, Prime Minister Modi is sending out a message that the minister who was responsible, the minister of health has been removed. We have mm. a new minister sending out a message to the people of this country that I do care for performance. And if the minister is not able to perform, he is removed. So lots and lots of messages in this cabinet reshuffle. I won't say this is only a message of uh, social engineering or this is only a message for, uh, you know, like contesting elections, etc. So lots of messages. Lots of different messages. But one big, uh, you know, message coming out of this Gita Bhatt is that this government has always been reluctant to concede that it may have got anything wrong. Uh, the moment that you suggest that, the moment you suggest misgovernance or anything, there's immediately a pushback. But here for the first time, you're actually acknowledging by sacking both Harshwardhan and his deputy that at least when it comes to COVID management, the government did bungle it. Well, uh, Vasuji, first of all, uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, the Prime Minister and other senior leaders, they have done a very extensive exercise for the last one and a half, two months where uh, the serving ministers also, their work, everything was evaluated in mm. detail. And based on that, uh, there has been a representation in this new cabinet, whether in terms, whether politically, yes. geographically, and but socially on, also. And yes, but of on course, Harsh I'm, no, I, I ask you this because so far see, the government's take on this has been that look, we actually Akshay, didn't bungle it. We managed to we managed to see, contain the virus. We actually did a good job. If that's see, the case, why is Dr. Harshwardhan and uh, his deputy being it sacked? Totally unprecedented. It was totally unprecedented. And uh, Vasuji, you know, before 2014, I would like to say that the ministerial birds, you know, they were taken as power seats, you know, as power centers. But since 2014. Uh, the Prime Minister has been constantly trying to raise the bar of governance and uh, the, when you are given a ministerial position, it really? basically means that you have been chosen to serve the people, to be a connect between the policies of the government and no, but, their uh, Geeta ji, you're a veteran political and analyst. It's not the first time that ministers have been dropped in a reshuffle. It's, it's been happening routinely. In fact, some would say that this is something that was long I overdue mean, in the case of this government. This is the first time that so many ministers have been dropped. But uh, let's, let's, let's get uh, Ami Ben to respond to that. That Ami Ben, I think you can criticize the government and say, listen, you bungled the pandemic, all of that. But now, the fact that they've actually sacked so many ministers, does that take the wind out of your sails? I don't think so. The Honorable Prime Minister or the present structure has sacked any ministers. They are made to resign because no explanation yes, is offered no explanation is offered that they did not perform. The, all the time they have been saying, we have done this, we have launched this app, we have got this many vaccines, we are exporting this many, we are importing this many. These are the number of vaccine centers and everything uh, has been told in that way. So there is not an iota of evidence that they are sacked, they are made to resign. That is one point. Second thing, I just heard somebody say that, yes, there's an international image. See, by reshuffling your cabinet and bringing some ministers from uh, yes. other parties, you can't change your image internationally. There are many, many, many factors that have already... No, no, uh, but at least, at least this is the first step. I mean, ben, to See. it's not a small thing to drop close to a dozen ministers, including big names like Ravi Shankar Prasad, Prakash Javrekar, Dr. Harshwadhan. Surely you can see that's a big step. I still don't think so. It is a big step because I think it is a message being sent to its the BJP party that, well, you are, I mean, you can, if I tell you to resign, you can resign. I can bring those people who have helped me, uh, for example, getting power in Madhya Pradesh, getting power in uh, certain other places. Okay. And so this is a reward I want to give. So please, okay. I need to remove you to replace them with this reward people. No, no, so but that come is on, uh, is that Gansham Tiwari? Okay, but Gansham Tiwari, surely you would concede, even if Ami Ben doesn't, that now, especially with Parliament coming up, this does take the wind out of the opposition sails because you say, oh, you mismanaged the pandemic, but they say, we sacked the minister. Well, you sacked half the government in that way. The people who represented uh, the government after the cabinet meetings, the people who represented the government on mm. on uh, a lot of public platforms, sure. in a government that is uh, often tight-lipped about what it is doing and is not transparent with how it is doing it. So uh, I don't think this government can can really find any solace that now that there's a new team, um, we we will perform better. Uh, they have always centralized their their credits to the prime minister and okay. decentralized the, the the lack of it to others. One thing that is disheartening actually 
is the list that they have released about the cabinet ministers. There is not a single woman minister in the cabinet minister. So uh, the tokenism that BJP is doing is also visible. You cannot just slice and dice politics in caste arithmetic and and uh, alliance arithmetic and who can break a government in, in which state for, for BJP. Well, this there are quite a few women ministers. You, I mean, uh, you're saying there are no uh, women ministers in the cabinet, but uh, the new women ministers, I'm counting at the moment seven. Uh, that's quite a significant well, number of I'm women ministers. I'm looking at the, the press release. I'm looking at the press release that says that who are the cabinet ministers in the new, new list yeah. and who are the ministers of state. And in that, you don't see any women ministers. Okay. But uh, let me just ask uh, Satyaprakash Mishra, uh, spokesperson of the JDU, that uh, Satyaprakash Mishra, one thing to say that we've got these underperforming ministers, we've sacked them. But if you look at the names that have come in, it does appear to be politics as usual, business as usual. These are all leaders that are either have to be accommodated because they either crossed over or they had to uh, you know, be accommodated like uh, Sarbanan Sonawal sacrificed himself or they're representing some caste or regional interest versus talent. Actually, I, I couldn't get your question. There is a, some voice breakage. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you be a little bit loud? Yeah. Yeah. It's very low voice. Okay. My question to you is that you may have sacked all these ministers, but who is the talent that has come in? Is this talent or is this tokenism? No, it's not at all tokenism. Hmm. You have to understand if the Prime Minister of India has decided in the interest of his government for the betterment of the people of India. Okay. You know, there is uh, somebody was saying social engineering. This multi diversity society has to be accommodated in every aspect of the government at the governance as well. Who has been dropped? It, there should not be any question on that. If the Prime Minister has decided, it is his prerogative. The second question, the talent. There are so many people who have been inducted in this uh, uh, oath ceremony. They belong to the expert, you know, uh, For example, quality, like, you know, IS officer, IFS officer. Like, give me, give me some, tech. give me some examples of the names that strike out to you as, as Even Hardeep, Hardeep Puri, even RCP Singh from JDU, who has been the IS officer. When the, there was no reservation policy, he is product of Jawaharlal Nehru University. So, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister has inducted the people who are expert in their qualities, right. and the people who can perform better. And one question is, uh, uh, you know, there is a social engineering. Suppose if you don't maintain the social engineering in a multi-diversity society like India, then no, no, how the social engineering represented inside a cabinet? No, no, but Satya Prakash ji, the point is, there is nothing wrong with social engineering. The, the, the question is that the BJP has often said, we don't believe in that. We don't play the usual jat path politics like all these other parties. No, 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 we no, are no, a meritocracy. No, 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 but in this time, they have said actually given us the breakup. I mean, I've never seen this. First time as a journalist, 12 SC, 8 ST, 27 OBC, so many minorities within the SC. We have given, you know, tailies, how many. So, so it's Vajan actually Ji, like how you, you distribute tickets in an election. BJP, That's how you're actually distributing Rogan, cabinet seats. So every political party, whether it is Congress or BJP or any other political party, they try to accommodate every section of the society. Okay. Every so then there is no difference. There is no, no wrong in that. All right. No, no, no. no. That's why I'm saying then BJP is not party with a the difference. They're like the every Prime party. Of India and the okay. last question you raised. Where is the talent? So many bureaucrats, retired exports are inducted in the government. So the government now will definitely so move the government, with the betterment of the people. Okay, but this is the same the government that has said that the that we cannot deliver because there is a bureaucratic chokehold, and then also promotes retired bureaucrats as ministers. So there is a little bit of a paradox. But I just want to ask Sanjay Kumar that Sanjay Kumar, uh, you may expand your cabinet, you may sack ministers, you may fill benches, but at the end of the day, this has been a very, very centralized government. Core decisions are essentially taken by one or two leaders, which many are increasingly believing is to the detriment of governance. Do you think that as part of the reset, it's not just about adding more and more bodies, but also the prime minister democratizing how decisions are made or no? Uh, I suspect that this is going to happen. This change is going to take place. We keep hearing about 
government being being very centralized around 1% to 2 or 2%. Uh, so even if we have larger number of ministers in the cabinet, I don't think this is decision making is going to be more decentralized. I think it is going to still remain the way it has been in the past. You think it'll it'll continue to be a one or two man it show? Will, it will continue to be centralized the way it has been during last seven years. I I don't expect any major change in the way decisions have been taken by the government. So, uh, Geeta ji, then what changes? Because if it's all essentially going to be a, a one or a two man show, then you can have 50 ministers or you can have 80 ministers. Doesn't make a difference. Actually, this is you know a kind of a false perception which many people have. You know, at time and again they try to portray. And I would like to correct that there are two women cabinet ministers already there, you know, Ghansham ji. And also, while it is being talked about the popularity of the prime minister, there are recent uh, you know a survey which was conducted by some international agency. Okay. There was 66 percent approval rating, which was the highest globally for for the prime minister. Now coming to this, that, uh, time and again, but when you uh, say that this particular uh, cabinet, hmm. Asuji, please let me complete. Uh, you see, when you yourself are, you know, putting all the figures that there are 27 uh, uh, from uh, OBC community. That no, no, these from are figures supplied by the past. government. I'm but only just reporting them. I was quite surprised when they shared this. We're just putting it out. You see, the community. You're not. That means that different communities are getting a representation, and especially those who have been. You know, historically not being part of decision making, they have been. No, but Geeta ji, you are telling me that this government is not a. You are telling me the government is not a one. You are telling me this is not a one, uh, one man show. How often have we seen cabinet? How, how often are decisions taken in a collegiate way? In fact, let me tell you, very interesting. Devendra Fadnavis, who had come to Delhi, he was supposed to be inducted, finally didn't. He actually gave a. Uh, this is very recent, just three days ago, at Nagpur airport, he said, only one person takes all decisions in our party, government, prime minister, <laughs> that's it. So, is this an official statement by Mr. Fadmanan? Fadmanan he is? said it, he, yes, he said it well, sir, on well, camera I, to, you know, well, to reporters. Way. You see, those who are, you know, uh, those who are going to be inducted in a cabinet, definitely that the pre that is the prerogative of the prime minister of the country. Why would anyone like to take away that prerogative from the prime minister? I do not. No, no. He said that. all decisions. He said, as you know, all decisions in our party well, are taken by one person. Is, uh, well, he he, uh, he is the you know head of the executive, and there uh, any okay. decision which is taken by the cabinet, whenever a cabinet meeting takes place, it is headed by the uh, headed by the prime minister. So but one thing that was interesting, by... right? One thing that was interesting, Ami Ben Yagnik, which was Nirmala Sitaraman, because when one talked of attempting to do a governance reset and address the pain points in the government, which was of course health, but also the economy, she managed to survive this this purge. Surprising. Yeah, so that is exactly what I am saying. That we may not divert the uh, today's uh, decisions of the Honorable Prime Minister on positives and negatives or somebody performed or somebody did not perform. Right. If anyone should be going on this particular parameter, it should be the Finance Minister. Look at the state of the economy. Look at the state of the GST, which is uh, completely in a state of distortion and also a complete failure in a sense. You have to ask the states. So if somebody has to go on merits and demerits, I think that is not the consideration of today's expansion of cabinet. Unless, you know, of course, actually, it is to divert the attention from all the issues of the country, one right. thing. Second thing, to bring in people who have helped the Honorable Prime Minister or this particular BJP, I don't know whether it is existing or mm. not as a party, to be in power. And so everyone has got rewarded. Okay. And in order but to that's something which, that uh, yeah, Satya Prakash Mishra, uh, what, what do you make of that? How would you explain that you say, okay, we mishandled the pandemic, so that's why Dr. Harshwadhan goes. But the economy, which has been actually tanking even before the pandemic, the minister stays. You know, regarding the going of Harshwadhan, we are speculating the things. Uh, exactly, we don't know what was inside the prime minister's mind. But at the same point of time, you know, challenges of economy and challenges of pandemic is very different. On the one front, you have to work very directly and immediately regarding pandemic. Mm. 
but at the other hand on economy you have to you know work regular on regular basis the performance of nirmala sitaraman might have been calculated and definitely he is she is there so a woman uh, finance minister is there so economy will be managed very smoothly and it will be done no, on regular I, I don't, basis <laughs> no, no, look, I, I it's, it's to wonderful to have a woman finance minister or any women but i don't think that's an automatic me. guarantee of competence but i'm still asking you this that wouldn't you concede that there has been economic mismanagement i mean the, just the numbers itself tell you that story you know the nation is facing pandemic and economy definitely you know going through a crunch so we have to and the government has to perform well on the economic front but at the same point of time okay. it cannot take a finance minister out only due to that there is a, some pandemic it has to be you know no, no, no. on the regular uh, basis just to be clear and on the pandemic growth, front you have to work immediately no no the economy was in was the economy was in distress the economy was in distress much before the be pandemic respected. sir the economy was in distress much before the pandemic at least 5 to 6 quarters of slowing growth uh just a quick take from you as a, as a as a sort of political watcher sanjay kumar that uh this sort of circle that's been drawn around nirmala sitaraman what what do you make of that uh i so i think the, the government is trying to make a point the point which they have already made earlier you know uh, when she was met the defense minister you know it grabbed the headlines that you know first women defense minister uh so in spite of finance minister not performing well i think she she has been uh, she has been retained the uh, government doesn't want to touch because this is another headline they want to keep grabbing in a sense you have a woman uh, who is head, who is the finance right. minister of this country and so this is this is kind of a showcasing one minister a women minister who is heading a very important portfolio right interesting also perhaps because she is part of the big four and while you can shake up you don't necessarily maybe want to touch the big four uh, because that has very different ramifications but overall ganjam tiwari as we start to wrap you still think that the opposition because it's your state uttar pradesh which is now coming up for elections you don't think that this has taken some more of the sting out of the tail for the opposition i think government is facing the deficit of of confidence of people in governance bjp unlike any other party wants to stay in power to win elections other parties win elections to to come to power so there is a fundamental difference and the point that geeta bharti made i think uh, there are 30 cabinet ministers in, and with finance that's 31 there are just two women uh, ministers so i think uh, that is something that bjp has to look at i don't think symbolic no, but ganesh you said there are anymore. no cabinet women cabinet i think the, the now you at least I'm acknowledging saying, that there are two of which nirmala no, sitaraman is one <laughs> i'm saying the new list the new list that they have released that has 15 cabinet ministers of that there is no women cabinet minister okay fine of that you're saying uh, they aren't there but anyway uh, let's see still fascinating because the portfolios aren't out so this is only actually the trailer and uh, as i say picture abhi baki hai when the portfolios come out we don't know we don't know whether whether even finance will stay where it is and uh, so much else is still up in the air so Let's see how that plays out but thank you so much for joining us we're out of time thank you for watching good night